Denver voters rejected Mayor Michael Hancock's proposal for a new sports arena in 2021. So the development of the Park Hill Golf Course, that could be as close as Mayor Hancock comes to a signature project on his way out of office. Denver voters are turning in ballots right now to decide whether that land will be developed by the investment group that bought it more than three years ago. Politics guy Marshall Zellinger looks at what's likely to happen if that ballot measure passes or fails. What are Denver voters really getting if they vote yes or no on 2-0, the fate of Park Hill Golf Course? If it's yes, there is already an agreement in writing between Westside, the investment firm that owns the golf course, and the city, and another one between Westside and several community groups. But what is binding and required, and what's just hopeful? The agreement with the city requires 80 acres on the east side to be given to the city for a park, with another 20 acres at least for open space. The west side, closest to Colorado Boulevard in yellow, can be developed with housing and businesses. The blue section is residential. The buildings will max out at 5, 8, and 12 stories. The agreements also include several requirements for affordable housing. 25% of the homes must be income restricted. 300 of the income restricted homes must be sold, not just apartments. 40 homes must be for what's defined as extremely low income residents, from individuals making less than $25,000 to a family of six making less than $41,000. The agreement with the community groups, not the city, calls for a set amount of commercial space to be offered at below market value and a plot of land for a grocery store to be offered rent free for 10 years. It doesn't mean a grocery store will be built, just that it has to be rent free for a while. It's an agreement that runs with the land, meaning that if Westside ever decides to sell that land to any other developer, those commitments still exist. Bill Riggler represents the Yes on 2-0 group, which today is responding to questions about what happens if voters say no. The publication Westward reported that a top golf could be built next to the part that must stay a golf course. Westside would not exclude consideration of any allowable use under the under the easement, and that would include a top golf like uh, uh, use. We have the opportunity to make it a park simply because the business case for running a golf course has never made any sense. Harry Doby represents the no on 2-0 side, which wants to see the land as a park, not a golf course. But a 2019 agreement between the city and West Side calls for the land to be restored to an 18-hole golf course if it is not allowed to be developed. Is no on 2-0 not interested in any affordable housing on this park land? It makes no sense to build on it when we are building around it. He's referenced referencing unrelated projects that are building housing in the area, just not at the Park Hill Golf Course. I mentioned those two agreements, the one with the city and the one with the community groups. They are both legally binding. The one with the community groups has more financial based incentives, like a fund that will cover property tax growth for residents within a half mile for eight years. And as I mentioned, a discount on rent for commercial businesses owned by women and minorities uh, and the possible grocery store. And again, I say possible mm -hmm. because it's not written that it has to be there or must be there, just that there are incentives to try to get one there. I think one thing that strikes me, Marshall, when you lay out the numbers like this, this is kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity in terms of the size of this piece of land. But when we talk about the actual numbers of units going mm -hmm. in, you could put those numbers of units at any number of different places in the city by building up. Oh, sure, yeah, if you, if you build uh, vertically, absolutely. 25%, as I said, have to be low income or income restricted. But that includes, if I look at the chart, and I didn't show the numbers of the entire yeah. chart, you could be talking about somebody who makes a teacher's salary, somebody who's making, you know, in the in forty to seventy thousand dollars. That's considered that would be considered as part of this group. That forty number that we showed earlier with the really extremely low income yep. people. I mean, that's people again twenty one thousand zero to uh, a family of six with forty one thousand. I think is what I said, but just forty of those homes. But then they'd be there at least. There's forty people that'd be fighting for that probably. All right, Marshall. Thank you for the breakdown.